Hello, um, I am Kate. I uh, have the brand uh, Profit with the Planets. I'm a financial astrologer. Um, I have been trading for about 12 years and I've been doing financial astrology for about eight. Uh, I specialize in equities um, and I really, really sort of quite enjoy teaching. I obviously trade um, financial astrology um, and I really enjoy teaching the stuff. I wanted to uh, make a bit of a video on GameStop. Uh, I know there's a lot of financial astrology out there at the moment. Uh, I want to just say first, I think it's amazing what's going on that, you know, that when you are a financial astrologer, as you can imagine, you've probably seen on the internet, you know, it's obviously, and it's understandable, everyone's very sceptic, it's a bit esoteric and stuff, but, you know, you really can use this in trading very, very well. Um, I would just say it's like confirmation bias. It depends how you want to use it, but one of the really good ways is in confirmation bias. It's really great, obviously, to have that technical ability. Uh, you would never really rely on it alone. Look, I, I kind of use it first to make trades, but I kind of use it all together. I kind of probably analyze a share if I think it's worth coming into or not with it. I, but I think it's really, really great that there are people out there that are promoting this and they're sort of going in with a, a no fear thing. I spent many years on Wall Street battling this and I've learned to keep my mouth quiet. I was advised to me in front of BlackRock, just keep quiet. It just was the best way to go about it. But um, I'm a little, there's some of this content I'm seeing. Look, I have been doing this for about eight years. Um, and it's the way, you know, obviously been back testing it for eight years, what works, what doesn't work. Um, you cannot actually put normal astrology and just bang it straight on to finance. It doesn't work like that. We have specific transits. We have to use specific planets. We use time is the most important thing. At the end of the day, we're only using financial astrology for time. That is why you use it to know when to, when to come in. It's not so much when to get out because the chart gives us bad momentum or whatever. But um, if you don't use time, your trade won't work. Uh, and we don't use the transits in modern astrology. The trade will just not work either. And I'm just a little concerned about some of the content I'm seeing out there that isn't quite, uh, I'm not saying it's not right, but um, it's certainly not why I've seen some of the analysis of equities going up and stuff. And just because obviously we're putting money in the stock market, you know, we have to use the right astrology. It's really important. Um, if you want to use financial astrology and I just you know these things need to be back tested you really need to know what you're doing I'm not saying this like this crypto thing you know that and to you to you know to use modern astrology in the way it is now we didn't have crypto markets like you know 10 years ago but there are people like Bill Meridian, Raymond Merriman, Carol Mull, um, Gian Long, Grace Morris, um, Kay Shrinker, you know, and these people had a club and they've been back testing this because it's almost like you can't just, you, you have to use a, it's proper back testing and it's based on statistical stuff uh, and it's specific to finance. I'm just a little concerned that some of the information going out there to do with equities, that's all I specialise in, in equities and I'm, you know, I'm sure this stuff on the street, on crypto and being very new and we can use trends as they are now. Uh, but I have seen some of the information it's not quite right. Um, and if you're into this, I think it's just really, really important. You need to use financial transits and thing, and mostly time. I'm not going to give the whole thing away. Uh, I've got a book and stuff. But if you don't have the timing of certain transits and when, you know, I sort of did see out there that, um, you know, it's when the, the, this, the transit is coming, it's way more important than when it's finished. If you don't get that right, you're not going to get the trade right. And because if you don't know when to enter the trade, if you don't know technical analysis, ideally we use astrology to come in way before something's popular so we can ride the whole thing. But if you're coming in on the tail end, and because, you know, not, not everyone does, it takes quite a long time to be able to do charting well. And things are changing a little bit now. But if you're riding that last wave of a trade, if you're in... A, a trade when a specific financial transit that means two planets coming together once they've made contact a share can actually drop and fall away very dramatically and you can lose a good 20 30 percent of value now if you're coming at the end of a trade 
not quite knowing the astrology you can actually end up losing on this even though the astrology was right it's just a bit concerning to me that there's a lot of this information going on out there that is not talk so if you really want to get into the meaty stuff you need to be getting the information from someone that knows this stuff so look it's all great if you're using it for fun but we're talking about money in the stock market so you actually can't get this wrong you can't cut corners and you need to have that experience that knows what works and doesn't work because you know with these astrology setups we get one shot now it's okay obviously if you're looking for things when they're going on a daily basis but if you're planning a trade out you know if you're putting two three hundred dollars it's great but you know um if you're putting like twenty thirty forty thousand dollars into something and that's why people use financial so we, they use it to have the edge and we use it with charts and stuff but this time thing is super, super, super important. So I'm going to use GameStop because it's obviously one of the most popular equities. It's had very clear, strong astrology. Um, and I'm actually just going to properly show you not just this sort of fly by nut, but this the nuts and bolts of a financial astrology setup. Um, this is obviously our strongest part of the chart because we have what's called a stellium, which is three planets or more. And because we've got a couple of financial planets in here, it's even more so strong. But this is, you know, these are you know, it's pretty weighty here. So we will put a lot of our focus when we've got certain transits going on here. Now, we've actually about to have those. That's something I'll discuss. But we've actually had something very, very strong. And this is not what I saw at all discussed online, which is why I was a bit, oh, I think I need to come in and make a video of, like, what's really going on here because um, this is sort of really, really, really important. So what we had is this Jupiter-Sun conjunction. We had the markets going up about, I'm actually surprised they didn't finish on 500. They went up for about six, sort of maybe 550 at a time. It's very rare the markets do not, are not up heavily into Jupiter-Sun conjunction. They have fallen away really quickly before and after, which really is probably not ideal. So they're pretty weak right now. But if you see here, looking at this chart, we have... Um, Neptune at nine degrees. Now, Neptune rules entertainment, things such as gaming. And this is what I just haven't seen. Degrees are really, really important in financial astrology. They're probably one of the most important parts. So you can't just sort of flip over them. We're looking at degrees. Um, so what we had is this Jupiter-Sun conjunction. The conjunction is when two planets are, you know, on top of each other at the same degree, whatever, um, are put together because that's easier to understand right over this planet which rules entertainment and gaming now you knew that this was going to the way especially things were going you knew we were going to get a bit of a peak right when this came in now jupiter neptune is really really strong in equities anyway but when it rules the industry of the um, equity then you're going to get an even stronger move so this this little setup here of Jupiter and the sun at nine degrees over the natal planet ruling gaming at nine degrees, which is what gave us that real kind of whoosh moment. Um, and what's quite interesting on this, so if I look, this is the other way we look at it. Um, when we sort of had the actual, before everything, we were in Mercury retrograde. So things are, we knew that things were going to go crazy. We were in the shadow. We were in those chaos three days before things go even worse. Um, and what we have, it was called, when you see a little naught, it means it's applying. But what we had is it hit exactly on the 28th of January. Now, that was that last day where everything was smooth, easy, before all this Robin Hood stuff. And to me, and I did say this on social media, you can go back through my feed at Profit with the Planets if you want to look at the timestamp day predictions, um, that when we have applied, when the energy is coming, it's usually a lot stronger than when it's gone. So... Um, a couple of people that, um, you know, that I liaise with or clients or whatever, and, you know, they're in a, I don't give financial advice, by the way. I teach astrology and everyone has to do it for themselves. But I sort of knew that this was going to go a bit, well, something was going to kind of not be quite the way it was going up and the level had gone up and we had a big sort of morning star doji and everything. But when this, the minute this separated, um from this sort of applying and if we wanted to actually get like really 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 nuts and bolts into it this actually it was exactly at uh the 28th of jan at like i don't know actually on so the second time let me just quickly edit this chart into manhattan time um 
So this came in exactly at uh, 2.30, oh, actually 1.30, I think it was, yeah. 1.30 in the afternoon on the 27th. And that was our last day that we got it all kind of good. And then everything went a bit crazy after that. Now, we still kind of went up into this. We weren't quite at this 999, which is what we're looking for. So, you know, you could have played it like that. I personally would have taken that Jupiter, Saturn, you know, sorry, Jupiter and um, Neptune. Because sometimes one really important thing in astrology is financial astrology, when it's done, it's done. So it's not just a matter of, oh, these planets are all over. No, we have to take, it's about the, the thing setting up and then think of this crazy energy. Once it's gone, it's gone. So often, and this is really what I'm saying with these time rules, is really, really important. You can't play around with this stuff in financial astrology. We learn, need to learn when the trade is setting up for us and when to get out before it's too late kind of thing. Uh, and that's where just some of, the, ugh, some of the information I'm seeing because, you know, you, sh you, you can't just play around with that stuff. But anyway, so we kind of went into this on the 28th. Now, you know, we've obviously got a bit lingering, but it's a bit of a mess right now. And it's, you know, we you could have taken this as well, which would be this sort of the real, like, finale of this thing for now. I don't think this is things finished, but, and just walked away. And if you'd come in early and I this was happening, it'd be good kind of thing, you know. Anyway, we're, you know, looking at this where we are, right, and looking at probably what's important to show you, we had this amazing setup coming in. Um, this is the natal Jupiter, and Jupiter's kind of like, you know, we get a lot of money out and, you know, price rises, I should say, out of Jupiter or good things happen to the company. So you have this amazing setup here. And even here, you know, we're applying. So we've had Saturn and Jupiter and Uranus coming to Jupiter. Um, Saturn is super, super important financial astrology. So again, it's a little bit, like if you're not using Saturn properly, you're not doing financial astrology. Uh, and that goes across the board on all equities. Um, you can't play around with Saturn. You need to know what you're doing with that stuff. But anyway, we don't have anything negative. And this is our also the Neptune that's ruling entertainment. Again, we've got this sort of positive energy coming from Saturn and Jupiter coming in. But so we've got like a two-way Jupiter thing coming here. And not is when it's applying. So that's the energy that we want to use. And you would see that. And here again, you're a um, couple of degrees away, which is what we want to see as well. And that's when we come in and we take the trade. And then we run it to this thing here. And we knew that we had this sort of Jupiter Saturn conjunction. You could have even just run it from what the 20th to the 27th or whatever. Perfect. Um, and then we're here now, and you'll see there's quite a difference. So it's starting to go. So it's starting to separate. And that's why you're just seeing it all a bit of a mess and stuff right now. And if we go forward in days, but it's not bad. Even if you've got Saturn setting up here, okay. Now, Saturn is kind of, if it's not good, it can be really heavy duty. But when Saturn's in good shape, you don't tend to see a lot of negative stuff. I mean, obviously the markets are a bit shaky with Mercury retrograde, so we're in this sort of weird zone. We've had this mega astrology that separated. But it's not really that terrible. Look, we've got one thing, but look at this on the, the down on the Neptune of you know ruling entertainment. Neptune can be a bit people pay uh, get all a bit. But it's but it's to the if this was the Neptune in transit and then squares, I means people can pay too much. They're really lost or sense of what's going, on, which is going on anyway. But we've got these really strong transits coming here. Look, this is the tenth of Feb. We've got pretty good transits here. There's really not anything negative. With it, look, a lot of astrology is done for now, but there's more coming. But I would not short this. I think you either leave it alone or do whatever you want to do with it. But I don't think this is terrible in any way. Um, and we've got some more astrology coming up. But there's one thing, and this is what I didn't see on these videos. And look, if you really want to properly do financial astrology, you have to work with eclipses. Like nothing happens, especially three, four hundred percent without eclipses. Like that, and that's where I was just like, uh, this is oh, I'm not quite sure of this content. It doesn't feel like proper financial astrology content. So, what we had um, in this in uh, I think it was December, we had a um, eclipse at uh, twelve degrees i'm just going to put this eclipse so we have this 12 degree eclipse in uh, sagittarius um actually sorry that's next year sorry let me just click on this year which you can have a look at later there's going to be an eclipse to pluto december 21 another one but we had 
sorry, let me just go into 2020. You've always got to work with a list of eclipses um, as well in, um, here we go. So we had this eclipse um, 15th of December, 2020, and it went over Pluto. Now Pluto is this sort of major corporations, big business, stuff like that. It's interesting because we're really seeing that now, that big corps have got involved in this. But Pluto also sets off this big kind of stuff. Um, Tesla actually had an eclipse to Pluto that we, um, you know, saw that going on the NASDAQ. So this is really important. It's a little wide, but we've got another one too. This is at six degrees. And we usually have something that activates the eclipse. And so what activated it was when Jupiter came over here. Um, we also had Jupiter conjunct Mercury back into 16th of December and either people were talking, I don't know when these YouTube videos were, but this is a strong community. Like usually it was either out probably on YouTube or there, someone was discussing this internally. We see a lot of things internally in astrology, but my theory was this was setting up back in December around the 15th to be quite specific. But this is what caused the craziness here. And one more thing too. And this is what made it happen. So this is really important in financial story. It's just not a matter of all these planets flying around. We look at a chart and go, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work like that. We need a really, so eclipses are actually number one, solar as well. So they can last for a year. Lunas go for less, like we even solar can go a year and a half. We need an eclipse to make these big, crazy things happen. And if you're not doing that, you will probably a little bit more work to do on it. But anyway, but so it's really, when we're looking for stuff here, we want to look for an eclipse and come in earlier and then find what, you know, what might make it happen with the activator. We want more than one thing. We can't just rely on one thing. Um, that wouldn't have just happened with just that. We had to have that. But what we also had is um, an eclipse in, I have a little list, so this is what I'm just going down to look at my list here. On um, November 30, which is quite interesting too, and I'll just bring up, we had an eclipse, another eclipse um, here to the Saturn, and this one is bang on. And usually when they're right on it, um, they are stronger. You know, you can almost like double the power kind of thing. Um, now these are the lunar, so it takes about, usually it's six weeks to play out. This one is the one that hit the US dollar and really crashed the US dollar because it went to the Nato Uranus. Um, but anyway, we had it trining the Neptune ruling entertainment stuff. Now usually Saturn eclipses are quite negative. Um, but look, maybe the negativity is what's going on with it now in a really weird way. So we had a double whammy of this eclipse and this eclipse. Um, but this is really what set this off. So I can't, if you really want to do financial astrology properly, you have to get your head around these eclipses and stuff. But anyway, you know, we're in the now and why, you know, so we can see what happened and when it happened. So that's just really, and then we actually knew when to kind of take, come out of the train. And this is just putting this thing all together. So we knew now that this is at 10 and this is, it's actually at 9, 9.03, see here, nine three. So this is finished. So all this sort of week all over the shop because the energy's gone. When you think of just like this, these planets are huge. They're bigger than like football fields and stuff. So there's so much energy when they come in contact. When they separate, they've done the work and this is if you want to use a financial astrology you have to and there's a certain time even a certain amount of days each things are different but it's very 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 important of when it's done it's done kind of thing but what we do have is um jupiter coming up we have if you see we have two more 24 degrees again our important degrees we have and it's called a stellium when we've got three more plants in a house and it means it's got this when we have Jupiter coming over, we have this huge build-up of energy, but the degree is super, super important. And there's been the specific days that you're going to see things happen. But what's really important, it's not just going to go over it. It's actually going to go retrograde, which is backwards, and then it's going to go forward and back. So you're actually probably going to see quite a prolonged time of um some activity in this. I'm not saying it's going to go up the whole time, but it's very, very powerful often sometimes the first ones work when you want to trade this with time or the first one does the second one doesn't but this is why we use financial astrology for time there's actually no other point of it otherwise you just fancy chart up there and because the whole point is knowing when to come in and out of the trade if you want to use this probably now this is not financial advice and as i said the first it's not going to all three might not work so i can't give that anyway but what we would look at is 
when Jupiter is coming out again, we want to look at it a degree or so before or two degrees. So even when it's at maybe 22 or whatever, because the Pline is stronger, we're looking at astrology. It's not quite as amazing. We've got a little Jupiter semi semi squared Jupiter, but that's separated. And that's again, so that's, you know, we're not terrible by any means. We might want to get rid of that, but we're not there yet anyway. So what we want to look at is Jupiter. And because it's the Sun and Uranus, and they're both financial, you know, it would make sense to me that around this 9th of, actually I'd say around the 8th of April, now give me, there's always a three-day window to in financial astrology. This is where I'd be like, Ugh, always plus minus three days. You cannot pinpoint a specific day in financial astrology. That is just not possible. You always allow plus minus three. So you cannot go at someone that they said a day and it didn't happen. And the astrologer should not go this day. Look, when it's a Jupiter sun conjunction in the markets, it's a little different. But when we're talking about these charts and equities and maybe Bitcoin works different, I don't know, but we always allow plus minus three, always. Um, except for that separate, you know, and even we have our rules with separating, but, you know, so we're allowed a sort of three-day window when we're coming over and that's these little black things and we've got a planet coming on top of another one. But I would expect something on this day. Now, we still have Venus here too. Jupiter Venus is kind of fluffy. I kind of consider it like the, it's kind of like icing on a cake. It's not going to like make the cake taste of that well it's gonna be the sweetener I guess you know but you would kind of run this over um now that's gonna happen um that it's gonna hit kind of exact and again our exact thing but we have certain rules that we follow if we're doing a sweet price but around this early June so maybe you're gonna see it's a little bit of it's obviously to April and June so you might see it come in spurts of interest traders coming in News generally, this is to do with price when you have like Jupiter over Uranus to me is pretty, you know, you certainly don't just go, oh, yeah, whatever, it's pretty important, and over the sun too. So, but then what's going to happen is that Jupiter's going to kind of get past it, look, and it's going to come back again and go right on it. And then it's actually going to go back right again on that spot here. And if you don't see that the first time, you might see it the second time or something. It's usually a bit weaker when these planets are backwards, but you've also got Pluto at 24 here. So you have 24, 24, 24, 24. So you have Jupiter, Pluto, the sun. Like there's no way I would almost say, let me see if Pluto's at 24 here are uh, the first time hang on a sec let me quite see what's going on here um yeah so pluto's even at 24 here so if you don't see so 24 24 24 24 um, that's 23rd of November 2021. So that's the third passage. I, and you know it's all direct and strong. I'd be keeping my eye on that date. Um, the other date when we had that 24, because Pluto takes ages to get around. And when he's wet, now these are a bit weaky here, but I have seen planet the, the, the astrology work. It's not quite so much, but then our other date would be around, um, let's have a look, 8th of September that you might see something. And then also um, then the other one, so we don't have Pluto at 24, that other one. So those are really, you'll have to go back over those. So that's, that's really important. That's why I just can't stress enough. We have to use degrees and not just, oh, this planet's over another degree. It, it, you know, it's about the combinations of degrees, you know, and they don't even have to be touching each other necessarily. So that's just something that I needed to reset a little bit. And we look at, it's not just about, oh, this day, this is doing that. We actually have to take it, analyze the chart and make a plan. Uh, if you want to use this seriously and you want to trade with it, um, that's how you have to do financial astrology. It's, you know, crypto is probably really different. It goes volatile and that, but generally you come in and you plan this stuff out. And it's not just about, you know, I don't know, I'm not quite <laughs> things I do. So it's just how I do things differently than some of the stuff I've heard with certain planets, which are, to me aren't the financial planets. And well, in equities anyway, they certainly don't affect equities in that combination. But, you know, th there might be other things that happen and stuff. So that's kind of where we are now with it. Um, I did mention the nodes getting used. And when if the nodes are conjunct, that is because it's the eclipse 
of the, the natal eclipse. That's the eclipse that affected this chart when this company came into existence. And so that eclipse is always really, really, really important. So any eclipse that's going to be around 25 degrees of Gemini is always going to be really important to this chart. Um, that's kind of why we use the nodes. I actually don't use them that much, but that's just one thing if you want to kind of know what that means, what that means. So any, and that would be actually between 22 to 28 degrees Gemini. So you would look for um, any eclipses um, that affect that and stuff. So yeah, that's just kind of a bit of the basics of how I wanted to point out. So we look for eclipses, then we look for Ideally, this sort of chunk of planets when things are coming over, um, it's super important. And here, of course, you know, we have, we have the thing that sets it up. We look for the thing that activates it um, when we do this stuff. So it is kind of nerdy and it's kind of technical. It's definitely not like looking at our astrology and thinking, oh, I'm going to have a good time now. This is kind of maths and stuff and serious stuff. So I just just coming from the old school a little bit, if you really want to get into this, unfortunately you have to study a bit. Um, but I think, as I said, I think it's absolutely fantastic, um, you know, what these kids are doing and please keep flying the flag and stuff. But if you want to do this seriously, you're putting money in the market, like, in, you know, particularly we're putting in a considerable amount. Uh, because it's Mercury retrograde also, your trades might not just, no matter what the astrology is, you, um, in a way, like the, the eclipses come over everything and that's super strong astrology. So it's unlikely that's not going to happen in Mercury retrograde. But we also have a disclaimer that things can go wrong. I don't know if you should, but I don't know. Personally, I probably wouldn't put astrology and say this is going to happen in Mercury retrograde because we are in this crazy zone where things don't go to plan. So we come with a bit of a kind of disclaimer on that, that we might put a prediction out, but we can't. So we never say 100% it's going to happen. There's a level of probability based on statistical research that professionals have done over 30, 40 years. Roman Merriman has a team of 10 people working for him um, doing data and kids obviously we've got to keep updating it and stuff like that. So it's serious stuff. Um, but yeah, Mercury retrograde as well. It's like, you know, <laughs> and we've seen that it's the classic Mercury retrograde. What has happened? Robin Hood, all these things going down, not being allowed to trade, being stopped, that is, you can see all the times on my Twitter feed. I mean, you couldn't have a more Mercury retrograde example of why we have to take care of trading there. We double check our orders, make sure we don't put extra zeros. We tend to not trade heavily. I don't trade at all. It's taken me about eight years to complete and it includes the shadow period. Now, the shadow period, we have about three days before um, we're in super haywire, you know. So the, this is not unexpected. I think I said, oh, you know, we're in a like chaos zone on my Twitter feed. Um, so, again, we just would never put out and say something's going to happen, but expect the unexpected. Don't expect things go to plan. And we that's why we trade lighter because our, our broken platforms, like, break, shut down, your internet goes at home, this crazy stuff happens. And that, so as with astrology, we're prepared. So that's just a little kind of, you know, getting into a slightly more, I'm just not saying it's not serious what's been done, but really getting into the nuts and bolts of how we do this. And if you want to, if you're really interested in this stuff and you're quite seriously into astrology, you have to, you can't just use, per, like, you know, you, you have to use financial planets, special financial combinations um, because, you know, there's a finance, you can't just say the Dow especially, is good. Like, that uses heliocentric astrology, say for gold. So you certainly cannot just be putting all this astrology out there. You need to go and use specific transits that, um, and it, it, you've got to, you know, really sit down and formulate and, and look at the chart and then spend a couple of hours on it to think what something's going to do you know and these guys are doing great on crypto you know I, I don't even understand it it's sort of beyond me and I've actually gone to specialize in equity so I'm only coming from an equities perspective when I chat but I do do indexes a bit and I've been trading for 12 years so I've been putting applying it and stuff um crypto dance is also really really great with you know, his um, crypto stuff and this. Everyone's got, and the thing is we can all have different astrology and all, usually when all the different things we're doing separately, GAN and stuff like that, we tend to get the same result at the end of the day. 
But when you want to formulate and create a trading strategy, you need to use the right um, combinations. Um, and, you know, because a lot of people trash this, it's really, really important that, well, not trash it, but, you know, I, I understand scepticism and stuff. But this is maths, it's history, it's statistical evidence, it's being put together um, based on, you know, so much research. So it's not just a fluffy thing. It's really, you know, particularly then when you put it into a trading context, um, you know, it's kind of serious stuff when we're using money um, and we're just using time. That's all, you know, that's, we're giving ourselves the advantage of time. We're still looking at charts. Most of, a lot of them are anyway. We're not doing it any differently to you. We just put another indicator on that chart. And that's where we really want people to think of financial astrology. It's just another indicator that gives us time because we want to know when our shares are going up or not. And if you don't want to know that, that's cool, you know, but um, it, it works and some of us do and we'll know when to get in and when to get out. So I um, hope you found that of interest. Um, but as I said, it's really great what these guys are doing. That's really pushing this forward. Um, and, yeah, it'd be great to see a little bit more content that's a bit, you know, kind of what all these people that have studied for many years have been passed on because it's a legacy. Cool. All right. Um, we'll see you on social media.